If you mess up your peptide dose, one of two things happens. Either one, you're wasting your money, or even worse, number two, you're putting your health at risk. And most people buying peptides online have no idea what they're actually injecting into themselves or how much they're injecting. In this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to calculate peptide doses accurately so that you can get the results you're paying for. I'll show you the mistakes people make, teach you the three measurements you need to know, explain concentration, and then walk you through real examples. But before we get into how to do this correctly, let me tell you the two biggest mistakes beginners make and why they're dangerous. The first major mistake I see people making is not understanding the difference between volume and concentration. They think that 10 units on a syringe equals a specific dose. It doesn't. 10 units only tells the volume you're injecting. So if you add one milliliter of water to your vial, 10 units might be 500 micrograms. If you add three milliliters of water, 10 units might only be 166 micrograms. Same volume, completely different dose because the concentration is different. The second major mistake is buying peptides from research companies without understanding how any of this actually works. You get a vial, there's powder in it, the label says five milligrams or 10 IUs, and you have no idea what you're actually putting into your body, how much you should be using, or even if what's in the vial says what the label says it is. Now, research chemical companies aren't necessarily bad sources. The issue is that they can't provide you with the medical guidance or dosing instructions. You need to understand the math yourself. And what I see most often is that people are underdosing. They don't understand concentration, so they're not getting the results they're paying for, and they think the peptides don't work. When I first started with peptides, this was also a struggle for me. But when I started, I didn't have the resources like the internet and YouTube to help me. But when you're injecting compounds into your body, guessing is not an option. And my goal with this channel is to provide you with as much accurate and reliable peptide information as possible without offering medical advice, of course. What I can do is teach you how this actually works so that if you choose to use peptides, you're doing it with knowledge instead of guessing. Okay. So now that you understand what not to do, let me show you how to do this correctly. The very first thing you need to know is that there are three types of measurements you'll see. Milligrams, micrograms, and international units. Milligrams is what your peptide powder comes in. That's what's written on the vial. Micrograms is what your dose is measured in. That's what your protocol tells you to inject. And the key conversion you have to know is one milligram equals 1,000 micrograms. So a five milligram vial of say, retitrutide contains 5,000 micrograms of that peptide. Some peptides, especially hormones like HGH and HCG are measured in international units or IUs. IUs versus milligrams is just a different measurement system. You don't need to convert IUs to milligrams. The math works the same way. Okay, so before we get into calculations, you also need to understand what's in that vial. When you order peptides from a research company, you're getting lyophilized powder. That means a freeze-dried peptide that needs to be reconstituted using bacteriostatic water. The amount on the label tells you how much peptide is in the powder, not the solution you create. Milliliters is the amount of water you add and the volume you draw into your syringe. This is a volume measurement and not a dose measurement. Most peptide vials can only hold up to three milliliters inside. And adding two milliliters to the vial is typically standard just to make math easy. Okay, so now that you understand the measurements, let me explain concentration. Concentration is what determines how much you need to draw into your syringe. Concentration is the amount of peptide in each unit of liquid. For the milligram and microgram peptides, it's calculated by taking your total peptide in micrograms, and dividing it by the water in milliliters. For IU peptides, it's your total IU divided by the water in milliliters. This number determines how much you need to draw into your syringe. And without knowing your concentration, you have no idea what dose you're actually injecting. Most insulin syringes have 100 units per milliliter. But again, those units are measuring volume, not dose. The dose comes from the concentration of what's in the volume. More water means less concentration. So you draw a larger volume, less water means more concentration. So 
you'll draw a smaller volume. The dose stays the same, only the volume changes based upon your concentration. All right, let me show you what this looks like so you can see what I'm talking about. This is an insulin syringe, and as you can see, it has markings from zero to 100 on the side. Each of these small lines represents one unit, and 100 units equals one milliliter. When I tell you to draw to the 10 unit mark, this is what I'm talking about. And I know it's probably hard to see with my camera. You can see the line at 10, and this represents 0.1 milliliters of volume. But the actual dose in this 0.1 milliliters depends entirely on your concentration. So if your concentration is, say, 2,500 micrograms per milliliter, this 10 units represents 250 micrograms. This is exactly why you can't copy somebody else's protocol without knowing their concentration. So if somebody tells you that they're injecting 10 units of BPC-157, that's literally meaningless unless you know how much water they added to their vial and how much of the peptide was in that vial. So now that you understand what the syringe looks like and how all these measurements work, let me walk you through a complete calculation from start to finish. Let's say as an example, you ordered this 20 milligram vial of retitrutide, and your protocol is calling for two milligrams per week injected. And you have a 10 milliliter vial of bacteriostatic water that you're gonna to use to put into your retitrutide. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two milliliters of this and put it into here. Knowing that this is 20 milligrams, I first have to convert it to micrograms, which is very simple. 20 milligrams equals 20,000 micrograms. And we know that we're gonna put two milliliters of water in this vial. So we take our 20,000 micrograms and we divide that by two milliliters. That means that we're gonna have 10,000 micrograms per milliliter or 10 milligrams per milliliter. And that's our concentration, so make sure you write it down. Now, all we have to do is calculate our syringe units. If I know that for every one milliliter or 100 units, I have 10 milligrams, and I only need to inject two milligrams per week, then in this case, I'm only gonna do 0.2 milliliters or 20 units per week. And that's what it looks like. Now, if I give you another example, let's say instead of this retitrutide being 20, it's actually 10, but I still put two milliliters of water in it. Well, now for every 100 units or one milliliter, there's only five milligrams of retitrutide which means that if I wanted to inject two milligrams, instead of going to the 20, I go to the 40, because it's half as concentrated. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, now let's go with the HGH. In this vial, I have 24 IUs of human growth hormone. And I know that I'm gonna put two milliliters of water inside of this vial. So in that case, for every one milliliter of this solution, I have 12 IUs of growth hormone. And if I'm doing two IUs per day, that means I need to do one sixth of this, which comes out to roughly 1.67 units per day. So again, the only difference between IUs and milligrams is just the unit of measure. Okay, cool. So now that you've seen how to do the math, let me show you the tools that can make this process even easier. The easiest way to verify your math is using a simple peptide calculator. And the one that I've built on my website is actually really simple. All you do is just input the size of your syringe. So in this case, we used one milliliter. Our vial of retitrutide had 20 milligrams. So in this case, we're gonna put 20 milligrams. We know that we're putting two milliliters of bacteriostatic water inside of our vial. And we're wanting to inject 2,000 micrograms per week. So as you can see, in this case, all we do is fill that syringe to 20 units. Now, some of you might have smaller syringes, and these are for more accurate measurements for much smaller doses. So let's say as an example, you have a 0.5 milliliter syringe. This is what that 20 units would look like on your syringe. Now, even though this tool makes things really easy for you, you should still understand the math behind it so you know what's happening. Never blindly just trust a calculator without understanding the logic behind it. Some of the common mistakes that I'll see people making when doing this is first, they're not converting milligrams to micrograms correctly. They'll see five milligrams and think that's 500 micrograms instead of 5,000. And that's obviously gonna throw off their entire calculation. Second, they're gonna try to mix up measurement systems without understanding them. 
And then third, they try to eyeball the water amount instead of actually measuring it precisely with the syringe. If your math says two milliliters, but you actually added two and a half, your concentration is wrong and now your doses are wrong. And then fourth, copying someone else's syringe units without knowing their concentration. And then lastly, fifth, people using the wrong type of syringe. If you're trying to draw very small amounts with precision, you need an insulin syringe with clear unit markings. Now, the actual dose you need varies from peptide to peptide. If you're not getting these through an actual doctor, you need to make sure that you're doing your research to find what that is. BPC might be something like 250 to 500 micrograms per day, while human growth hormone might be two to four IUs. Different peptides have different dosing protocols, and that research is absolutely required to find the appropriate dose for your peptide. And the cool thing is I've actually done a lot of that research for you in my free school community where I break down what most people are doing with different peptides. And I'll tell you how to access that at the end. But once you know your target dose, you just use the math we just covered. It's that simple. Okay, so real quick, let me cover a few variations you might run into. Some peptides are dosed based on your body weight. If your dose calls for two micrograms per kilogram and you weigh 90 kilograms, you have to calculate your dose first. 2 micrograms times 90 kilograms equals 180 micrograms. That's your target dose. Then plug that 180 micrograms into your concentration formula to figure out how many units to draw. And the other thing is, depending upon the peptide, is the dose will need to be titrated. And titration is when you start at a low dose and then gradually increase over time. This is very common with GLP agonists and some other peptides to minimize side effects and acknowledge the body's tolerance to the drug the longer it goes. The way that I recommend doing this is calculate your concentration for the highest dose. Then at your lower starting doses, you're just drawing smaller volumes. Your concentration stays the same throughout. You're just adjusting the volume you draw as you titrate up. As an example, if you're starting with say 0.25 milligrams and you're working up to one milligram over eight weeks, set up your concentration so one milligram equals 10 units. And at 0.25 milligrams, you'll just draw 2.5 units using that same concentration. Okay, so here's what you need to do every time to stay safe and get consistent results. Always use a peptide calculator to verify your math. Again, I have one on my website. The link can be found in the description of this video. Label every vial with the peptide name, the concentration, and the date you mixed it. Keep in mind that most of the time, these have a shelf life after they've been concentrated, and usually that's about four weeks. So you need to make sure that you buy the appropriate amount so that it's gone before that window closes. Keep a dosing log where you track the date, the peptide, the dose in both units and micrograms or IU, and any effects you notice. And then what you'll want to do is after you've mixed it, you'll store it inside of the refrigerator. Before you've mixed it and you're just storing it, you can put it in the freezer and it stays good for up to two years. If you're buying from research companies, understand that you're taking a risk. These are not FDA approved drugs and you need to know what you're doing. The people who calculate their doses correctly are the same people who spend the time tracking their macros and they follow their programs in the gym. They show up consistently and the people who cut corners on dosing also cut corners everywhere else. They tell themselves that close enough is good enough and then wonder why nothing works. The way you do one thing is the way that you do everything and you need to be very precise with this. Again, my goal with this channel is to provide you with accurate, reliable information, and I'm not giving you medical advice here, but I know that people are doing this anyway, so you might as well do it safely. My goal is to help you make the most informed decision possible. If you're gonna use peptides, you have to understand how they work. Now, if you want accountability around your health protocol, if you want a community of people who are gonna make sure you're doing things the right way, all you have to do is just tap the link in the description below. You'll see a link to my free community where we help people build systems for results in every area, not just peptides. We cover training, nutrition, supplementation, hormone optimization, and of course, peptide protocols and dosing research. All the information you need to take control of your health in the most safe and sustainable way possible. Again, that link can be found in the description below. I hope this video was valuable for you and stay tuned for our next video on peptide information. Talk soon.